Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I'm glad you're here today. This is another video of my favorite crafty things of 2019. I do this video series to kind of recap different products that came out throughout the year because there was a lot, and also to answer questions when people ask what products I recommend. Today is going to be all about ink. Now keep in mind that I will provide more information below, but be sure to go to my blog where I'll have exclusive discount codes, giveaways, and more information. I also have already done a few videos for this series, so be sure to check those out if you haven't too. Now, as I mentioned, today is about ink, and this is probably the hardest video of all to do because everybody has a different preference on what they like for inks. So today I'm just sharing with you what has worked for me over the years, and you'll notice that many of the products are not new products. However, there are a few ones that I've added to my collection that I've found give great results. I feel I need to start with my comparison between ink and shoes. I always do this when I talk about inks, and I think it's very important to keep in mind. Now, inks will give different results for different people based on several things. And inks are like shoes. Now, I have two brands of shoes that I wear almost all the time, and that's Allbirds and Rothy's. I find them super comfortable, they're lightweight, and they hold up over time. However, I know some people love maybe high heels because they like how it makes them feel or how it makes them look. I don't like wearing high heels and that's fine. Some people like Ugg boots. They think they're super comfy. I have trouble with them because they make my feet feel like they're getting squished. So a lot of this is personal preference. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that socks matter when you're wearing shoes, right? You got to wear the right socks. Same thing with stamps. Stamps, you have to have the right paper. The type of paper you use changes the results a bit. Another thing to keep in mind is quality. Quality of shoes is important, how they'll last over time. Same thing with the stamps or the inks that you use. So if there is an ink line that you like or you've heard about that I don't include today, that's great. Just because I don't include an ink line in this video doesn't mean that it's not high quality and it doesn't mean that you can't get good results from it. It's just that these are the ones that I've uh, found that I've had good experience with over the years. So please keep that in mind as you watch this video. If you use a different type of ink, that's great. I will be sharing some tips at the beginning of this video that will be helpful no matter what type of ink you like. And then I have some specialty inks that I'll be talking about later in this video. So I hope this is helpful to you. Let's start by talking a little bit about the different types of inks there are. Keep in mind this is very general and very brief. If you want a more specific video talking about ink comparison, I'll link to that up here on the top right. Now in general, there are two popular types of inks. There are uh, dye inks, which I use the most, and pigment inks. But there are also many specialty inks out there and more and more keep hitting the market. There are hybrid inks that have different combinations of the two, all sorts of things. But it all really boils down to dye and pigment and understanding the difference between those. And then it helps to help you understand what inks to use and when. So I just wanted to show you first a dye ink because this is what I use the most and I think it's probably true of most people. Now dye inks are a translucent ink that will absorb into the paper and dry very quickly. The reason I choose to use dye inks for most of my stamping is because it dries quickly and I don't make a mess. Now most dye ink pads have a firm felt pad and that's kind of been the tradition but there are dye inks that have softer more sponge like ink pads and again that is a personal preference. I mostly use the firm felt ink pad and that's what I'm going to show you here today. So this is Hero Arts, but many look just like this. You can see the firm ink pad. And when you touch a dye ink, you'll see that it shows up on your finger, it's translucent. You can see through this. And it will stain your finger because it absorbs. That's what's nice about dye ink is it's a, it basically dyes the paper. So it absorbs into the paper. Now this is a pigment ink pad. Traditionally, pigment ink pads are like a sponge, and you can see how soft that is, and they usually do need re-inking. Now, when I press my finger against this, you'll notice that the ink really is op more opaque and sits on the top of my finger, so you can't really see through that. 
Now this will wipe off my finger nicely because it's not really dyeing the paper as much as the dye ink. So let's do a comparison. This blue is a dye ink and the gold is the pigment ink. So you can see the difference there. And when I clean it off my fingers, the blue ink kind of stains it because it's absorbed and the gold ink will come off nicely. So when you're using a pigment ink, it'll stay wet for a while because it kind of sits on top of the paper. The advantage of it staying wet for a bit is you can heat emboss with it. If you want to not heat emboss your pigment ink, you probably want to heat set it to make sure it dries or it will smear. So I personally use dye inks the most, except for a few different pigment inks such as that gold one and white, which I'll talk about later in this video. And there are hybrid inks out there, I just happen to not use them much, and other types of fusion inks. Those I consider specialty inks, and we'll talk about that later too. So keep in mind there is a spectrum of inks, but this is just a little generalization that I think can be helpful to people to understand how inks work. Dye inks absorb and dye into the paper. Pigment inks kind of sit on the surface and stay wet a little bit longer, and therefore you can heat emboss it. I also wanted to share a few tips that are helpful with any ink that you may use in getting a good stamped result. One thing that I recommend doing is prepping your stamps before you use them. So I only do this the first time I use them, so when I have a brand new stamp, and I only do this with clear stamps. I find you don't need to do them with rubber stamps. So when you get a clear stamp, it'll be clear and shiny, kind of like glass. So you'll see a glare on it when you tilt it in the light. I find that if I just rub a dry cloth, I like to use a microfiber cloth, against the surface of the stamp, it'll take the ink better when it's time to do my stamping. So here you can see it's got a glare on it, it's shiny, I, it's kind of hard to capture in the video, but there's a shine to it. What I do is I take that dry cloth, you can also use your finger if you want, and I'm going to just rub across half of this so you can see the difference. So you'll see that it gets a little more cloudy now. So that right hand side is a little more cloudy, that's ready to take the ink. That may seem silly, but it makes a big difference. Another option is you could ink it up with Versamark ink and wipe that away, and that helps too. And as far as stamps, quality does make a big difference. I only use high quality stamps, so I know that I can get good results. So please keep that in mind and buy stamps from a reputable company. Okay, the other thing that really makes a big difference, and I thought I'd demonstrate it, is the type of paper that you use. So you gotta think about quality of stamps, the type of ink you use, and the quality of the paper that you use. So I usually use Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. I just find that works for just about everything I do with card making, so I just stick with it. I know there are other great high quality white cardstocks out there. So the smaller piece here is Nina Classic Crest Solar White, the one that I recommend. And on the top, I'm stamping on a lower quality white cardstock. It's 110 pound too, but it's thinner and not as good quality. I got it at an office supply store. So here you can see a comparison and how the Nina Classic Crest Solar White on the bottom gives a much better image. So I'm not saying Nina Classic Crest Solar White is the only good paper out there. There are many other good papers, but just keep in mind, if you're not happy with your stamped image, you might want to try a different cardstock. And if you want to learn more about the cardstocks out there, I will link here to a video on understanding quality of cardstocks for stamping. Okay, let's get into the inks that I recommend and use the most. I'm going to start with color inks, and I will talk about why I choose the particular ink, so I'm hoping that it gives you a little more information. The ink line that I find I reach for the most is the Gina K Designs Dye Ink. Now these are available in full pads or cubes, whichever option you like. I like this particular ink because of the color selection. I think it's a great arrangement of colors and because there are card stocks and envelopes that coordinate nicely with the colors of inks. There are re-inkers available, but I don't have them and I don't need them. I just find that this ink pad lasts a long time and I do a lot of stamping. They also don't smear when you stamp because they are a dye ink. Now one thing that is important to keep in mind with this dye ink and the others that I recommend today Dye inks dye the paper, so they kind of absorb into the paper so they're dry quickly to the touch. However, it takes a bit of time for the ink to kind of smooth out and get to its true color because it's drying inside of the paper, right? It's kind of a, 
easy way to explain it. But you just need to keep in mind that when you stamp it, it might look a little bit splotchy at first, but it will smooth out and reach its true color after a few minutes. If you don't want to wait, you can heat set it and that will speed up the process. Now some dye inks take a little bit longer to smooth out than others, it just depends on the ink. I find that the Gina K smooths out pretty quickly, which is a great advantage. And most of the colors don't stain your stamp, as you saw there. Okay, I had let that dry for a bit, the colors that you see on the paper there. Now I'm going to stamp it so you can see what it looks like at first and then what it'll smooth out to. So you can see the darker image there is a little more splotchy. It will smooth out and give the great results that you see on the top image. And by the way, this is how I clean stamps. I just use a dry microfiber cloth. If I have an ink that won't come off, I like to use my Ultra Clean Stamp Cleaner from Hero Arts. Okay, one thing I also like to do with my ink pads is stamp a little dot to put on the side, and that allows me to know what the color stamps like when I quickly look through my inks to find the color I need. I had mentioned that there are matching card stocks and envelopes for the inks, and I wanted to show you how true of a match this is. So this is tomato soup from Gina K, and you can see how the cardstock ink and envelope match, and the yellow is wild dandelion. So this is a perk for me. Some people like to have inks and cardstock that match. I definitely like an envelope too. So that's one of the other reasons I like to reach for the Gina K design inks. I wanted to show you some of the different colors of Gina K Design dye ink, and these are my ink swatches. So I use little coin pocket protector pages, and I create little ink swatches of the different colors using one of the stamps from the same stamp line. Now I have ink swatches available for free over on my website, and I'll be updating those soon, but this is very helpful to me in finding the color that I really want to use on a project. So if you're interested in what different colors you might like from a collection, just take a closer look here. You can also hit pause at any time if you want to write down a particular color. One thing I would recommend doing is not being too concerned about getting all of the colors from one ink line. Instead, mix and match between different ink lines and just go for the colors that you like or that you feel fill a missing spot in your little rainbow of inks. There's no need to stick to one line. When I'm creating, I often use these Gina K inks and I mix them in with some Hero Arts dye inks. The Hero Arts shadow and mid-tone inks are very similar to the Gina K and I have had these ink pads for 10 or 15 years. They have lasted all that time and I've never had to re-ink them, which is a huge perk to me. That is one of the reasons I prefer a firm felt pad is I feel like they don't need to be re-inked. And also I know that the pad will last over time. These hold up and are strong and will last even all my inky techniques that I do. Also, I find that the firm felt pad has just the right amount of ink for me. It's not too juicy and I know how to ink with that type of pad. And so it's kind of an old habit. So I reach for a lot of different inks that have that same type of pad. And the Hero Arts inks are a good example of that. There are cubes available. They haven't added new colors in a long time, so these are tried and true. This ink will first stamp a little bit splotchy and dark, but it'll smooth out and give great results like the Gina ink. It just takes a little bit longer, but it's definitely worth it because the colors are beautiful and the results are great. There is a new dye ink line that I have been using off screen lately and testing it out, and I've been really happy with the results. And this is the Pink Fresh Studio dye inks. What's cool about this line is they have sets of four available. So four different colors in the same color family that work well together. You can buy the pads individually and the full size, and then you can also get the little ink cubes that you see over there on the right. Now this works very similar to the inks that I've shown you. It's just a new color collection. So I like to use these along with my Hero Arts and my Gina K inks. Like many dye inks, this will stamp a little uneven at first, but it will smooth out to give nice results. And by the way, if you're looking to get better results with whatever ink and paper you already have, I do recommend considering getting a MISTI stamping tool or some sort of stamping tool. I find that I can get better results every time. And you can always double stamp an image to make it darker or smoother, or you can do other fun techniques with it. But I do find I get a better stamped image when I use a stamping tool over an acrylic block. I just find that works best for me and I thought I'd pass that on if it would be helpful to you too. 
So those are four different colors that go together in the Pink Fresh collection. And after it dries, you can see you get nice bright results. So here's a look at my ink swatches for this line. You can see how solid the results are and the unique colors in here. There are some really bright colors and vibrant colors. What I do is I put a vertical line. So in this column going down here are the four that go together. And then my bottom swatch shows all four of those inks stamped together. So I can see what the clusters are like. But you definitely could buy single ink pads of colors that you like. So you can just look through these and then pause whenever you need to. So I find that these inks work similar to the Hero Arts and Gina K. They do take a little bit longer to smooth out, but all you have to do is give it time or heat set it, and you'll get these solid results. There are other inks out there that are similar to these and the ones that I've talked about, such as Lawn Fawn, Simon's Stamp, Reverse Confetti, W Plus 9. So just look around at the different colors you like. I think color is such an important thing in your ink preference. Go for the colors you like. You'll be able to get good results if you use the other tips that I shared today. You'll be seeing me use these Pink Fresh Studio inks in many videos in the future. And finally, we have the Altenew Crisp Dye inks, which I also use quite often. These are fun because they come in collections of light, medium, dark, and extra dark of the same color family. You can buy them separate or together. There are the full-size pads and cubes available. There are reanchors, but I've never had to use the reanchor yet. Layering stamp sets are very popular right now, where you build several images on top of each other in inks of the same color family, but slightly darker each time. These inks take the guesswork out of which inks go together, which colors. You have the light, medium, dark, and extra dark, and it just makes it easy. You definitely can use these inks on their own too. You don't have to layer them. And I'm doing a color family here to show you. And although these inks are very similar to the dye inks I've already shown you, these seem to be a little less juicy, which is a good thing when you're layering. You don't want to layer too much ink on top of each other or it might bleed a bit. Also, I find that it takes a little less time for these colors to even out. If you do want your ink pads more juicy, you definitely could get the reinkers and reink them, but I really like how they come. I think it's perfect. And here you can see there's very little staining on your stamp. If you want to try all to new inks, you could try a set of four of a color family or try some of their lighter inks. Whenever I need a light colored stamp image, I like to reach for all to new. I just find that their light inks really are great. Sometimes light dye inks can be a little splotchy and not smooth out perfectly, but theirs seem to be just perfect. So try one of their light inks. I think you'd be impressed. Again, here are my ink swatches. The color families are in columns, so up and down. It starts at the lightest at the top, the darkest at the bottom, and then that bottom row is the colors layered together. So you can see the layered results that you can get from a set. A few things while I show you these different ink colors. Altenew just released a few new colors of inks today. So they're not included in this video, but there are some unique colors there worth checking out. Also, Altenew has alcohol-based markers that coordinate nicely with their inks, and they have paints and such. So if you're looking for a line of inks that matches your coloring uh, tools too, you can consider Altenew. Another random tip when you're trying to decide about an ink collection for you is to try out ink cubes. They are lower price point, so you can try a few different colors from different lines and decide which gives you the best results. Also, again, don't be afraid to mix lines. There's no reason to stick to one particular ink line. Just look at the different colors and find what fits in your empty spots in your rainbow collection. Before we move on to other types of inks that I recommend, there are three particular colors that I found I've been using a lot lately, and these are all light gray inks. The top one is Simon Says Stamp Fog Dye Ink, which works just like all the inks I just showed you. It's a super light gray ink. Then you have Gina K Amalgam Ink in the Whisper color. That's that middle one there. Now Amalgam Ink isn't a dye ink and it's not a pigment ink and it's not really a hybrid. It's a special ink that when you just stamp it, it has similar properties to dye ink, but I'll talk about why it's special later. 
but I like that light whisper color. It's a warm gray, and I think it goes nicely with a lot of cards. And it's also great for no line coloring. If you like to stamp an image in a light color and then color over it, that's perfect for it. And last but not least, on the bottom we have Hero Art's Soft Granite Shadow Ink, which is one that I have been using for years. And it's just the perfect gray that goes with everything. Okay, the next type of ink I wanted to talk about are Distress Inks. There are two types. There's Distress Ink, the traditional, and then there's Distress Oxide Inks, which are newer. These inks are different than any other inks and have some special properties that make them super fun for inked backgrounds and for inking techniques. I don't use these that often for stamping, but I use them for everything else a lot. So I have the two different inks here. On the left, we have the traditional Distress Ink, and that's available in cubes also. And on the right, we have Distress Oxide Ink, which is newer. Now Distress Ink on the left is a type of dye ink that reacts with water. Distress Oxide ink on the right is very different. It has both pigment and dye properties, which is very unique, and it reacts with water but in a different way. This ink is wonderful for blending, and it's wonderful for techniques. So let me show you a comparison between the two. On the left is Distress Ink, which has an ink pad that's similar to other dye ink pads. It's a firm felt pad. On the right, on the Oxide Ink, the pad is very similar, but you can see, although these are the same ink color, its pad looks more true to color because it's got that pigment property. When you put your fingers in the ink, you can see through the Distress Ink, but you can't see through as much that Distress Oxide Ink because of those pigment properties, but it does also absorb because it also has dye properties. One of the advantages of Distress Oxide Ink over other inks is check it out because it has the pigment property of sitting on top of the paper. The color can show up on top of darker colors of cardstock as you see there. These inks, both of them, are great for blending. If you like doing blended backgrounds, I like to use my ink blending tool with these inks. But I'll tell you, the Distress Oxide inks are the easiest to blend that I have ever used. Because it has that pigment property to it, it'll blend out and it's more forgiving. You can move the color and get a nice blended look. So whenever I want to do a blended background, I usually uh, reach for the oxide inks. Both of these inks will react with water, which is super fun and makes it great for fun techniques. The Distress Oxide ink will give a whiter look that looks like it oxidizes as it dries. So I've done many videos showing techniques with these inks and you can check those out for more ideas. But keep in mind that these are very unique and that they give these fun properties. I recommend the Distress inks in the Mini Cube because it's a great way to save money and build your collection. And then the full size pad for the Oxide because that's what's available in. There are reinkers available for these, and I actually do recommend buying the reinkers. These ink pads are the type that need reinking more often because of the consistency of the ink and because you use them a lot for inking up backgrounds and doing direct to paper and so on. So keep in mind that reinkers are useful with these inks. Another reason I recommend both of these inks is because they're great for doing watercolor. You can press the ink pad right onto your work surface, pick up some of it with water, and do watercolor. So there's no need to have a huge watercolor collection. This is what I usually use. The Oxide will give you more opaque results, so it's nice to have both options. Now, as I mentioned, I rarely stamp with these, but if you want to stamp with them, uh, you can see that the Oxide will give you a more vibrant result because it's both absorbing in the paper and sitting on top. So the color will show up more on a darker color cardstock, which is a great advantage of that ink. So I do recommend checking out these inks if you like doing techniques and you want to step up your stamping. Okay, now let's move on to the pigment inks that I recommend. Some people like to use colorful pigment inks and get great results with them. I tend to be a messy stamper and I need an ink that dries faster. However, there are a few particular pigment inks that I use quite often and I'm thankful that it dries slower because we can heat emboss. First we have Hero Art's Unicorn White Pigment Ink, which I have been using for many, many years. There are many white pigment inks out there that are similar, and they all give similar results. 
There are re-inkers available, and I do think it's good to have a re-inker for this since it is a pigment ink pad. Now you'll notice it's got the sponge pad and it comes onto your finger very opaque. You can't really see through it because it is a pigment ink. Now when you stamp a white pigment ink on colored cardstock, it won't be perfectly solid. If you want a perfectly solid white image on colored cardstock, I recommend white heat embossing. This gives you more of a ghost-like image and you can intensify it by stamping it multiple times on top of each other. I really like this look and I think it is super fun for layering with dye inks, which I've done in videos before. I'll link to one here. And it is wonderful to use with an ink blending tool to do like a soft white glow around a card. So keep in mind that white pigment ink can be used for many techniques and also for soft stamping. I also recommend getting Versamark ink. Now Versamark ink is one that I've used for many years and I get great results with it. I know there are other clear embossing inks out there that people like, but I find that this one has uh, really worked for me over the years. There is a re-inker available, but I will be honest, this is the only ink pad that I just replace after a few years because it'll get discolored because I don't clean my stamps all the time. But it's an excellent pad to have because you can use it for a watermark look, like a tone on tone look as you see me doing here. It's just a clear ink that makes colored cardstock darker wherever you stamp it. But I will be honest, what I use Versamark ink for the most is for techniques like resist and such, but also for heat embossing. So here I'm just going to do a quick heat embossed image. Always use your anti-static powder tool first. And then I'm stamping on black cardstock. You'll see you get that watermark look, which you could just let dry or heat set. Or you can add your embossing powder. I'm using HeroArt's white embossing powder. And you can see the crisp results that you get with the Versamark ink. So if you're a new stamper, get yourself a Versamark ink pad because it'll open the door to many techniques. Two other pigment ink pads that I've been using a lot this year and I think are fun for adding a little bit of shine to your card are the Altenew Gold Pigment Inks. We have Antique Gold and Enchanted Gold. And these I use for two different uses. It's not that so much for two different colors of gold, but two different looks. So I wanna show you comparison. This first is the Antique Gold. This I use for solid gold stamping. Now again, no pigment is ink is perfect, so the color might show through a little bit, but I find if I stamp it twice or maybe three times, usually only two is all I need, I can get a nice solid gold image. You'll want to heat set this to make sure that it dries, but you can see the gold shine that you get. And it's great for sentiments also. Now, if you want shimmer on your image, I recommend the Enchanted Gold ink. Now this one isn't as opaque, so more of the color will show through, but it gives a shimmery look, which is really unique for ink pads as far as the ones I've run into. So here I'm just gonna stamp it twice and you can see the shimmer that you get on top of your cardstock. So comparing the two on the left is the Enchanted Gold with the shimmer, you can see how it sparkles in the light. And the Antique Gold on the right has a more solid shine to it. So two very completely different looks. You can also do direct to paper or ink blending with these pads. And you can see here the big difference between the two. On the bottom is the antique gold, which is more solid, more solid shine. And on the top is the enchanted gold, which is like a shimmer that you can kind of put on the edge of your stamping or on the edge of your cardstock. And I'll link to a video here where I use that particular ink. Both of these are really fun to use on your cards to add a little bit of shimmer or shine. And by the way, I write solid and shimmer on the lids of the pad so I don't have to guess which to use for what. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to share my recommendation for black inks. There are many great black inks out there. All of them vary in their properties and how dark they stamp. But I have boiled it down to two black inks that I recommend and that I reach for in all of my card making. And I use them for different things. First is the Altenew Obsidian Black Ink. This happens to be a pigment ink, but I find it's a bit different than most pigment inks out there. It's like a fine pigment ink and it dries quicker. The pad is different, it's a firm pad, unlike most pigment ink pads, which are a sponge pad. I find that I can get crisp results with this and it stamps super dark black and you can heat emboss with it. 
Because of the firm pad, you can ink up your stamp like you do normal dye ink. So you don't have to be careful to over ink your stamp. So you'll see here when I stamp it, the results are crisp and they're dark. So I use this often for uh, sentiments, but I usually will heat set it just to be sure that I don't smear it. I tend to smear everything. It dries quicker than most uh, pigment inks, but it does take a moment to dry. So just go ahead and zap it with your heat gun so you don't smear it. One of the big advantages of this being a pigment ink is that you can heat emboss it, which is always nice to add to your black outline images or sentiments. I first am going to use Hero Arts Satin Pearl Embossing Powder. I just wanted to show you what this looks like when you have the black pigment ink with this pearl embossing powder on top. This pearl embossing powder picks up the color underneath and gives a metallic pearl look. So in this case, you'll end up with what looks like a platinum kind of shine. It's really beautiful. But if you just want a black embossed image, what I like to do is use this ink with clear embossing powder and you'll add shine to your crisp stamp sentiment. So I do recommend this ink, especially for heat embossing or any black stamping of outline images or sentiments. And by the way, it cleans off the stamp nicely so you can see there isn't any staining with it. The other black ink pad that I recommend and that you see me use more in videos than any other ink is the Gina K Designs Obsidian Black Ink. Now it just happens to have the same obsidian name as that Altenew ink. They came out at similar times, but they're very different inks. This is what Gina calls an amalgam ink. It's not a pigment ink, it's not a dye ink, and it's not a hybrid ink. It's a unique mix of properties. It behaves like a dye ink in many ways in that it absorbs into the paper and dries very quickly. But with the amalgam ink, you can use uh, alcohol-based markers like Copic. You can use watercolors and you can use colored pencils and Gamsol. And you don't have to worry about it bleeding. This amalgam ink line comes in different colors, mostly neutrals. But I reach for the black the most and the whisper gray, which I showed you earlier. So when you stamp with the Obsidian Amalgam ink, you get a nice dark image and it dries very quickly. I thought I would stamp my two favorite black inks next to each other so you could compare the results and see that they look very similar. They both are super dark black and they're very crisp. It just depends on what you're going to be using your stamping for on which to choose. As I mentioned, you can use the Gina K Amalgam ink with your alcohol-based markers, such as Copic. You can use it with watercolor, and you can use it with colored pencil and Gamsol, and it will not bleed. I do recommend heat setting it or giving it some time to really absorb into the paper before bringing your marker to it, just to be sure. But I find that I never have any bleeding if I do so, and that that is the ink that I use whenever I want to do any type of coloring. I reach for the Gina K Amalgam ink. Now the Amalgam ink comes in two different blacks. First Gina came out with jet black ink and now there's the Obsidian. The Obsidian is darker so I have switched over to using the Amalgam Obsidian ink from Gina K for all my black inking. So just wanted to share those two recommendations. I think they're both worth trying. Well, there you have it. I really hope I didn't forget anything. If there's any information I want to update or answer questions, I will leave that in the pinned comment below so you can check that out. Also, if you're interested in checking out these inks or learning more, I have the links in my YouTube description. I also would suggest going over to my blog for those exclusive discount codes and giveaways. In the middle here, you can find the link to my playlist for the My Favorite Crafty Things series for this year, and also to my last favorite inks video that I did. So you can learn more there too. Thanks for spending this time with me, and we'll see you again very soon.